I'm Anna Berry with NewJersey.org here at Startapalooza interviewing Michael Liguori, who is the founder for What Are Minds For, Inc. Welcome, Michael. How are you today? Oh, doing good. Thank you. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. So tell me about your product. Uh, my product is called OMS. It stands for Object Memory Management System, which is why I just call it OMS for short. And it allows you to talk to an electronic device as if it's another person, regardless of how you say it. So you, as an individual, don't have to know the keyword commands to use the product or system. You only have to understand what it does for you. So if you take, for example, a digital thermostat, the only thing that you have to understand about a digital thermostat is that you're controlling and configuring the temperature. So you could say something like, set the temperature to 72 degrees on Monday morning at 7.15 a.m., or you could say the day first or the time first. Ohms allows for phrase independency so that you as a consumer don't have to know the keyword commands. So it just makes it simpler. So I can say 72, 5 p.m., heat. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it would actually understand that. <laughs> it would. So what would it do if I said 72, 5 p.m., heat? It would figure out that you're that when you say PM, it's going to change the time to the appropriate thing. And even though you didn't say the actual degrees or something like that, it will figure out that you're using that number to set the temperature. And since you're saying to heat, it's just realizing that it is a temperature-based command. Okay, so this is a software that can be in many different venues, correct? Uh, yeah, basically the, the, the technology is supposed to allow you to communicate as if it's another person. So you could take that to any device. You're talking about your stove, your microwave, your alarm clock, your hopefully there'll be a Mr. Coffee in the future or something like that, right? Uh, so you're rolling out of bed, you're rolling out of bed late, and you want to make sure that you get that small cup of espresso. So you just say to the system because it's pervasively just listening in your house and make myself an espresso or Mr. Coffee, make me an espresso. This way, you always have to give it a name, as if it's like your butler or something, because otherwise, you don't want the TV set actually triggering the system to go and change the temperature of the lights on and off in your house, so. Well, so is it, is it kind of like a, a tech butler? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And how do you implement? You use the butler name, just because I think there's somebody else's product out there, oh, but. Okay. Well, how do you implement this technology into the device, like a stove or a heating system? I have to partner with a manufacturer who's building these things. I'm kind of like an outsourced R&D shop, so I have to pitch to different manufacturers and convince them that this is a viable product for their for their product line. And what competitors are there out there on the marketplace? Uh, Siri, Iris, Zipper, but they're really targeting mobile and the digital living room. Okay, well, talk to me about Siri because a lot of people have that with their new iPhone applications or their, their new iPhones. So what's the difference between what you have to offer and Siri? Um, well, Siri's targeting the, uh, the mobile app itself kind of uh, for your calendar, your phone call, stuff like that. Um, they're targeting mobile, which is all SaaS-based approach. I'm really targeting an embedded environment, so literally individual devices in your home. Okay, well tell me about funding. What funding have you received and what funding are you looking to receive today at Startapalooza? I have bootstrapped everything myself, so I've spent about $35,000 on this since uh, 2010, and I'm looking for a half mil capital raise. Okay, and what will that capital raise do for you? How will it take you to the next level? Uh, well, it will allow me to staff, hire more employees, uh, get materials and boards that I'm going to need, software licenses, to uh, integrate my product with a manufacturer. You know, a manufacturer isn't going to want to spend all the money for me to do a joint venture with them. I have to be able to fund myself. So, Well, what gave you this entrepreneurial spark? Why did you create this, what mines are for? Well, um, you get angry, actually. Uh, I actually got let go. And the stupid thing was that I was actually on two projects and delivering software for them at the end of the month. And I go to the head guy and I'm like, do you know I'm delivering software for you at the end of the month? Um, no. Corporate didn't even know the order of who is getting let go and how important the actual individuals are. To them, when you get on the layoff list, you're just a number. You get picked off in a particular order and that's it. And right now, actually, that company is actually on layoff number six. So the company was at 2,000 some what people. When I actually got let go, they were a little under 1,000, I think. So it's a big decrease. And when I was in the military field, so 
changing up the president. You know, it's it's different Republicans versus Democrats. Democrats view that everything should be uh, institutionalized, more and more social, and Republicans think more of uh, private private owned businesses and defense. So you have this divide of where the money actually circulates and. Well, it was just it was going to happen anyway. I think that business didn't wasn't really managed the best anyway. Okay, so you wanted to take life in your own hands and create this. Tell me about the title a little bit of your company. Uh, funny enough, I it was a screen name. Uh, I just said to myself a while back before I even really started uh, my company was if I ever get a company, this is going to be the name. And it was actually just an acronym. It was actually just what the letter R minds and then then the number four. So you could probably still find me out there because there's no one else that has that name. Great. So let's just say you get all of your funding. This this starts to roll out. Do you have other ideas that you want to start implementing in the future for your company? Um, definitely. Like, I don't know if I should really talk too much about it, but um, the product's meant for systems of systems. And uh, so home automation is just one system, but then you could go to a security system and integrate all that together. And then just... I don't know, there's so many applications, it being inside a car, and I don't know, really I have to start going to another community to start gathering different ideas because the, the, the potential to be able to communicate to a system as if it's another person can just really go into any type of marketplace. And it, it comes down to what the requirements are for that particular marketplace. Okay. Well, as an entrepreneur, do you have any advice that you would like to give to other entrepreneurs out there on the same journey? Uh, it's a tough road. The, the, the biggest problem, I think, in becoming an entrepreneur is dealing with the day-to-day -day because you're going to have great days and then you're not going to have such great days where you're at the bottom of the barrel. You see that there's other competitors coming out. You see there's other products out there and you can't be scared to go and look at them. You got to find out what they're about and whether or not they're even going to be a viable product. And even, even with that, if you hit other bad days just because you're frustrated, you think you might not ever get there, it's, it's taking your own due diligence to keep going regardless of what circumstances are out there. It's about being an optimist, not a pessimist, and not a cynic. Oh, good. That's, that's very good advice. Well, good luck with you, Michael. It was wonderful interviewing you. <laughs> your product sounds great. So there he is. What are minds for, Inc.?